It seemed as though my tenth birthday marked a major change. I stopped having the dream. From the age of five through to nine, I had had the death day dream at least once or twice a month. Sometimes I would have the dream on consecutive nights for a period of a few days, and at other times several days or a couple of weeks would pass before the dream reappeared. The dream always gave me comfort, and I don't ever remember being frightened by its content or message. The certainty of the knowledge was a surety that I knew others did not have. That made me feel special, as though I'd been specifically chosen to know the future. Initially, on reaching ten years of age, I was not concerned when I hadn't had the dream for a few weeks. But, as time marched on, and the dream still did not come to me, I started to feel less certain, less comfortable with my life. My life was somehow more ordinary, more like everyone else's lives, more scary and full of the unexpected. By my eleventh birthday, there was still no occurrence of the dream. By my fifteenth birthday, I had almost forgotten that I'd ever had the dream. Over the space of those five years, I lost a lot of the confidence that I'd had when I was younger. I became more withdrawn, solitary, less willing to take risks. I was still doing the things that all the other boys of my age were doing, but I would never be the first to try anything. I became a follower instead of a leader. Prior to my tenth birthday, I would usually be the one to suggest trying something new, going somewhere different. I'd have been the first to climb a tree, try swimming in a pond, I'll clamber up a rock wall. Now, in my teenage years, I had become so withdrawn that people would not even notice that I was there, usually tagging along at the back of the group instead of being out front. I had few friends and spent much of my time on my own. At the age of sixteen, I left the local grammar school and started attending a sixth form college in a major town around twenty miles from my house. This being the early 1970s, I started to dress and act like a hippie, a flower child. I also started to make new friends, both at the sixth form college and among fellow hippies at the nearby university. My parents, especially my father, found this change in me hard to deal with, and we started arguing. I started to spend more time away from home sleeping on the floors of any friends who would allow me to stay. It was a turbulent time in my life, and I felt isolated from my parents and from the village that I'd grown up in. I decided that I no longer wanted to live at home with my parents. I wanted to see and experience more of the wider world around me. But I could only do this if I also left the college and tried to make my own way through life. Somewhere in the recesses of my memory, I felt that I did not have much time in which to try and experience the richness and variety that life has to offer. So, although it was probably the hardest decision I'd ever had to make, I made a choice. I left home and college simultaneously, just a few weeks after my seventeenth birthday. I also started having the death day dream again.